With diplomacy failing, NATO and Russia are both mobilizing for a potential war. Tonight, more American weapons, part of a $200 million, 90-ton package, arrived in Ukraine to help defend against a possible Russian invasion. President Biden saying he's close to deciding whether to mobilize additional U.S. troops already on high alert to Eastern Europe, although not inside Ukraine. Hello, welcome back to another episode of Watiana. My name is Ojo and I am Busao. Watiana. Yes. Ojo is <laughs> welcoming you to Wise Up TV. Um, today we are going to have a look at what is happening right now. The war between the Russians and the Ukrainians. And now, these are the developments going on there. Well, we go now to the front lines in eastern Ukraine, where CBS's Holly Williams traveled with Ukrainian troops. And as soon as they approached the area, there was heavy artillery fire just a few hundred yards away. Today, as we approached the front line, there was heavy artillery fire. We estimate just a few hundred yards away. Those actually sound quite close now. And there have been maybe eight or nine at this point. These Ukrainian soldiers told us it was Russian-backed separatists firing on their front-line positions. Ukraine's been fighting a war against Russian-backed separatists for nearly eight years. These muddy trenches now carve up this country. The Ukrainian military on one side, armed by the U.S., and fighters in breakaway regions now recognized by Russia on the other. In recent days, there's been an escalation in the attacks, some hitting civilian areas, sending people into their basements for shelter. There's no electricity, no cell phone signal, and nobody cares about us, said this elderly lady. And today, the Ukrainians buried two of their fallen soldiers, killed in a conflict that's torn this country apart. U.S. officials say Moscow is arming the separatists, and there are fears that the surge in fighting could be used by Russia as a justification for its own military action. Nora. Holly Williams, thank you. Stay tuned. If this is the first time or your first time watching Wise Up TV, don't forget to subscribe to Wise Up TV. And again, uh, like our videos and your comments, as always, are needed. For those of you who don't actually know what triggered this war, uh, let me give you a brief about because we'll be giving you updates from time to time and you need to know what exactly triggered this uh, tensions that has tend to be a war this time around. Okay, it is all about this pro-Moscow Ukrainian government. That means uh, um, the Ukrainians, you know, they take their orders from the Russians because whatever the Russians say, they have nothing to say about it than to obey. So, in 2014, the Ukrainians decided that they would no longer uh, continue with this pro-Moscow thing again. So, they dissolved it or they collapsed it. And the Russians saw that if the Ukrainians are going their way, it is going to be a bad move because uh, they are going to align or the possibility for the Ukrainians to align with the Western world is uh, very high. And as most of us know, that when it comes to the Soviet and the Western world, you know, they are not in a good term. So for a country which was under your control to ally with these people will be something else. So in response, the Russian troops took control of Crimea, a peninsula in the south of Ukraine. It's Abusia being because of this tension, not air Kosovo. The Russians held referendum in Crimea for the people to decide for themselves if uh, this disputed territory should be part of um, Russia, just officially, no, 
this uh, Kremlin and you know, almost ever declared it's a part of Russia. So after the referendum, the people of Crimea decided that they want to be part of the Russian or the Crimea should be part of the Russian country. It's Abushia and this uh, referendum no you know the Crimea Parliament announced independence at the free uh, the Ukrainians you know as it but and to me you know just because say uh, uh, the world bodies you know at the air accept it because geographically you no know, the Crimea is part of Ukraine so for the Russians to take control there you no know, a idea be a yes referendum the Amaya but still now nah, no and to me and could be Russia and Sasa it's a free home no and uh, uh, the war began and uh, according to UN statistics from that 2014 ah uh, uh, this fight or this war started about 14,200 was killed including over 3,000 civilians so why is Putin invading Ukraine? If someone asks you this, tell the person that it is because Putin, the president of Russia, uh, traditionally sees Ukraine as part of um, Russia and he wants the Ukrainians to be under his control. So this is exactly what caused this war. And in 2021, the tension was very high Ah, just uh, even the Americans was giving uh, Putin some warning. The European bodies was also giving Putin some uh, threats that he shouldn't invade Ukraine. So the talks became tougher and tougher, but they couldn't conclude that that is the result of what we are seeing now. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and your comments are also needed. Until we meet again, many would do. We have pack our tools.